working our garter stitch today in three different colors. I'm using Tough Puff from Knit Picks for this here because it's really easy to see the stitch definition as I do this. And I got just, I'm using these double pointed needles because it's hard to get my longer ones on camera. And I like these, the feel of these clover ones. So garter stitch, the reason I'm doing this is because garter stitch can be difficult to count until you really see how the loops work together. And so this way you get a, a feel for how to count the rows. So garter stitch is just knit every row. Of course, there are two different ways of knitting. There's continental, which I do as well, because I now I crochet a lot. I originally was a knitter only. So I'm gonna join my yarn here. Okay, when you work in the knit stitch, you insert your needle behind and make an X. And then the way I'm doing this way is you wrap your yarn, pull through, and push that loop off. Now I have to tell you that if I was learning to knit again from scratch, I probably would learn continental because it you know you have this whole like they say the throw. It's also this is also called the throw method because literally right here you throw and it takes a lot more effort, but. I've done it so long that I'm much faster this way than continental, they're still pearly. Both ways are fine. I can show you the continental method in just a minute. Okay, I've only got 10 stitches here so that it would make it quick and easy. Okay, so I have knit this row. Now when you knit a row, it pushes the loops to the back. Okay, the back has all these little bumps that were loops on your needle. So they're pushed to the back now. So we're gonna turn. Mine's gonna get a little loose in the end because I didn't fully join. And now I'll do this one. Try to do it continental. So we'll knit, you insert the same way, but now Oh, it's because I'm joining. It's like, why does it feel so weird? Because I'm joining. I'm going to go ahead and do the, just join for the first one. Because that's still <laughs> kind of weird. They're using the different colors. I was like, why does it feel weird? Because it would normally be attached to the needle. Okay, now with it being attached, you insert the same way. And you wrap it like this. And you still pull it through. You still push that off. Insert, wrap, pull through and off. So either way is fine. The garter stitch is obviously going to look the same. I said I can do both, especially with stranded color work. It's kind of nice to know both, just so you can do one hand, you know, one, yeah, one hand has one color and the other hand has the other color. All right, so you're knitting every row. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go knit a few more rows and do the different colors. The reason I chose three colors is because now when you get back to here, you've got your original color ready to go. So you just kind of carry it up the side, not too tightly because you don't want it going like this, but just kind of make it even. So I'm gonna do probably six more so that we give three whole color repeats and then we'll come back and we'll take a look at the anatomy of our garter stitch. Okay, I've just finished row eight. It actually is eight because I counted on, I cast on with this gray color and I'm not counting it as my first row. And I didn't want to work the first row in gray because then it would look, you know, it would be this big batch of gray at the bottom. So you can see here, it's all a mix of these colors, right? And you're like, wow, how am I going to count that? Well, I know that the first one I had was a cast on row, which is right here, which is gray. And here is the loop for that. Okay, it's going up here and coming back down. So that's, I'm not going to count this one. I'll pull it down. It's easier to see, as you can see, with different colors. So there's, we had blue next. So you can see the, the V, oops, shaking there, the V of my blue, so one, and then the pink was next, so one, two, 
And I'll move that pink down. And then three, four, five, six. And the blue in there is seven. And then this is eight. So you just have to move it down. So I'll try a little further away. Pull that down. And you can see the blue. So one, pink is two. So it's ready to count the pink one. Move it down. And you see three, four. Count the blue. Five, six. And then blue is seven. Pink is eight. So that's how you count them. It's, without doing that, it's very difficult. Because you can see, I said, if you're trying to count the ridges, it's hard to do. So make sure you're pulling the stitch down and looking for these two V's. And you move the next one down, look for the V's. And I would suggest to say, just practice, practice, practice. Make a little swatch like this with three different colors and practice counting. Maybe watch TV and kind of lose track of counting and see if this method will help. Okay, and you, you could, the yarn tail can help as well because mine, with the method I chose, my cast on this little slip knot was the very bottom like the very last stitch that i did so i worked across to it for my first row so i was an odd number was going towards this and then an even number was going away from it this is my original one right here so it kind of depends on the cast on method you choose but if you do i did a knit cast on and so i used it there and so now I can say, oh, well, my account adds up. I've just done eight. And now that I'm ready to work nine this way, this is on the right side for an odd row. So when you work garter stitch in the round, you will just knit one row and then purl one row because the right side is always facing you. If you just knit every row in the round, you will get stockinette and just see all the Vs. So make sure if you're working in the round, you knit one row and then purl one row and just alternate. If you're working flat like this, you just knit every row. So nice and easy. Hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Subscribe for a new knit tutorial every week. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.